Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part 75 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. Having gone back in time to revisit chapter 6, let's see what Casarito is doing in, well, the old man's house. Well, strictly speaking, the two of them live together, I guess. So, on this particular day, Fia and Navarro decided to visit the old guy, see how he's doing. Hello, hi Kazurito. We're here to check on the old man. Hello, come in. So, you remember the old man? You do, right? He was actually kind of injured when we last talked to him. Oh, a couple months ago or something. We were supposed to see this scene much earlier, obviously. But I was being stubborn. Anyway, Katarito guides us into where the old guy is on a bed. He tries to prop his upper body up to greet us. <laughs> hey, old guy. We're here to visit. How have you been? So, what's with the two of you coming to visit all of a sudden? So that's the sound of him trying to prop himself up and feeling some pain. So, does it hurt? No, no, nothing to worry about. So, what are our Varo and Fia doing here? Don't tell me you're slacking off. Using this as an excuse to slack off, I believe it would be better to describe. And Varo says, you're always talking bad about him. But that's the old guy for us. Yeah, even though we went through the trouble to come visit him. But it's good that he's so lively nowadays. Like this, he should be able to return to work soon, huh? Well, of course. He can't just keep laying around sleeping all the time like this. Well, it doesn't look like he's putting on a show of our of our things, so yeah, pretty accurate. I want to point out for a second, Katarito has her arms there, on her knees, thighs or whatever, but she's not holding something. So his wounds were pretty bad back then when he came to the castle. But he's getting better, so Avaro feels better about that. So, has Katarito been able to be useful to us so far? Well, of course. At first she was hesitant. But she's gotten into it, little by little. We keep telling her not to try not to push herself too hard, but she's the type who pushes herself hard, so our words don't get through to her all the time. Well, you yeah, know, that's because. But, well, you know, she doesn't want to speak against us. Well, trying hard is a good thing. The old guy here also has some things he has left to do. And he's still got some finished goods that he needs to deliver. The fact that he can't try hard and do it at this time is really bugging him. Well then, hurry up and heal yourself. And of course he's trying to heal. 
<laughs> so anyway, Katorito should try our best, but don't push yourself too hard. Basically the same thing that the guys have been saying to her. All right then. Okay, good girl, good girl. There's nothing to be upset about. After all, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. So, Fizz thinks so too. Katorito, if she tries, she can do anything, so... As a goddess, she will personally guarantee it. Ah, here it comes. Our goddess's little endorsements. But of all kind of agrees with the assessment. So, with this little conversation, it seems like she's gotten a little bit of courage into her. She says thanks and nods her head. Yep, she'll try her best. <laughs> and he says, Avaro says again that you don't need to try too hard to, for us. <laughs> so it's fine, isn't it? Once a child gets up the spirit to do something, you should let them stretch themselves out and give it a shot. So they chatted a bit about miscellaneous matters and left. So I got 11 level ups for that. Well, not quite, no. I need to pass a few more days in order to see all the scenes, so I'm going to come down here first. I need some goblinoid fangs. I'll be back in a minute. All right, I did it. <laughs> well, this particular hall isn't important, but I did get three of those goblinoid fangs I wanted. And speaking of goblinoids... In that place you have a couple of four stars and some three star goblinoids to capture. Does Kauri need more hit points? Yes. Yes, he does. I may be behind on using some of these. Yeah, this would be just before the fight with Mikshuana, so... Before the fight... And before I did my bookkeeping. Oh, still something left. Giants. Oh yeah, I went and captured a whole butt ton of giants. And I was looking for that Earth Claw and leveling Katorito up. Interesting. I here doesn't have anything that boosts her physical attack, so she never uses any giants. So, I guess I don't need one star goblinoids. Oops. I suspected as much beforehand, but. Oops, those are three stars. Probably while I'm going to do the Mikshana fight off screen this time, I'm going to empty out all of my captured monsters 
so I can get as many angels as possible. Preferably three stars. But that's the time for later. Now why did I need those goblin claws? Oh, I got four of them, actually. I'm gonna make yes. more of Avaro's base weapon. Because I just hate not having one. Mithril hammer. I'm going to make the blazing fires weapons for Avaro and Deed Helm. Nothing else new. You know, so much I would like to do, but I don't have the materials for it. Hmm. Yes? One of these days, if I keep building all these potions, I'm going to have to start selling them. Since my max stock is 99. And for, to that purpose, I will want to build that one building. Here it is. The Exchange House. It improves my mining level, but it also increases my selling prices by 10%. Yes. Which is useful because I think selling health potions gets you 30 gold and buying them costs 300. So seriously, Detail and Shop is a ripoff. More to the point though, let's see what Katarito is doing with you and Mikeu. So, I've already heard about Katarito helping you and Mikeu out, so he came to peak. So he takes a look in and it's Katarito trapped between the two of them. They're working her pretty hard. So anyway, that's wrong there. You need to think about the process of cooking. So, she's sorry. How about this? So then, Mikio helps for... asks for help with... carrying something. All right, yeah. Hey. Yeah, do your best, do your best. You could help. So, from one thing to another, the two of them are ordering about with their house or chores. And she, for her part, is trying to do it desperately. Well, the two of them seem kind of happy, kind of like they got themselves a little sister. But what's up with this working her heart so hard? Avaro eventually dives in and asks them when Katharizo is a few feet, a little bit apart from them. Don't you think you're pushing them too hard? Captain, shut up. This is necessary. <laughs> That's pretty, uh... Straightforward. Well, Mikio nod, nods to this as well. It seems like these two have some kind of plan going on. And they, they don't seem to tap to just bully Katarito for the fun of it, so... Avaro will let this slide for now. But he's gonna keep an eye on it. Alright. Next up is the shopping. Here's a list. And additionally, this. <laughs> Yay! Ha! <laughs> uh. Isn't that cute? So it's significant that this scene comes right after that other. Random girl. I think this is the model of girl that throw a rock at Gilsh's head. I'm never going to forget that. 
Anyway. She sees the goddess, so so, so asks her if she's alone today. So, yes, and we get to view this scene from Fia's point of view. Anyway, Avaro seems really busy today. But they're always connected in by their hearts. So she's just walking around by herself, humming to herself and things. So she spots Katorito. Hey there. You're out shopping? Katorito says no, oddly enough. Perhaps she means that it's not for her. But what's the goddess doing here? So Fia is by herself out on a date with Avaro. Yeah. Well, she said their hearts are always connected, right? She can do that. A goddess of connections and things. But anyway, Katsurito's expression seems a little dark, so... Fia decides to smile by her side and... wander about with her. Fia's heard that... Katsurito's been helping out Io and Mikeu. And the two of them praise her for how hard she works. Hmm, for how hard she works, is it? Yeah, Fia thinks she's working hard too. Well, she's thinking actually that trying hard by itself isn't good enough. Fia thinks it would be. Yeah, but she's always only been protected. And she's never been useful to anyone. Up to now, whether she was in the in the Thunderlands or under the old man's protection, she's always been that way. Well, she doesn't need to worry about it. Right now, she's being trained, so she'll be plenty useful to everybody in no time. She's the goddess and she says so, so, that must be true. Hmm, well, that's nice of her, I guess. Okay then, she's going to teach you a special way. If you're worried about something or if something's bothering you, you should pray like this. So she closes her eyes, spends a little time silently, and opens her eyes. Wasn't that exciting? That's all? So, yes, that's all. What you pray for could be anything. Just call to mind what you want to do and call to mind Avaro's face. Call to mind Avaro. Yeah, it's Fia. Go with it. So, she attests that it is extraordinarily effective. And then believe in yourself and believe in the people around you. And do what you need to do.
Katarita wonders if she can do that. Sure you can. Fia guarantees it. You're handing out a lot of godly guarantees lately. So, wandering around in the presence of Fia's innocent smile, Katarito also eventually has a bit of a... Well, she smiles a little. I'd like to but use a better word, but it's not a smirk or anything, it's just a small one. So, Fia leaves her smiling and Katarito also returns to Presumably the other two girls. Well, 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 we're out of scenes already. So... I got the goblinoid fangs I needed. Next up... Was it here? Nope. Uragaru Twin Peaks. I'm going to the Ranurin Corridor. This I want to do. In this one I want to get the... what are they? Insect claws from the red bugs that will occasionally spawn. You don't actually get a chance to get a lot of them. And I forget off the top of the head why I wanted them. But anyway, I'll be back in a few. <laughs> Ooh, sweet. So, she is now a Thunderlands Dragon Miko. Dragon Priestess. She can go through lightning squares and gets... Counter priority, let's call it. Excellent, excellent. All right, I did it. <laughs> Actually, I got only two of those insect claws. Considering the number of red bugs I killed, I thought I'd get at least four, but two will work for me. So... <laughs> of all the things I captured, this is our it, huh? Well... Getting some females, he gets revive. Didn't he have revive before? No, I had revive. You didn't have anything. Well, this is something. And otherwise, I guess I have no use for one star spirits of the lightning variety otherwise somebody else would be saying hey I can use those too so I'm done with one star spirits one star goblinoids one star giants One star commons too. Ah. Don't you hate it when you're trying to throw things away and it automatically goes to locking? One star common beasts. Mm hmm. Probably one star undead as well. But it's uncertain unless I went through all of my characters. So, one star commons, one star. Commons, spirits, goblinoids, giants. <laughs> well, more importantly, the reason I wanted those insect claws is for Detail's base weapon. The missile crossbow requires one each time. 
And now I need more ore. Yes. Now the reason I didn't have one before was I used his first one to make this. And I think I used one to make that and another to make this. So the first one and the first one I built, I went in building those and I didn't have another. And now once I get enough aquatic beast fins, I can build this other weapon. Ha, ah, from one to the next, right? Yes, Sugida. So let's see what Katarito has to say. So what's she doing hanging out, Kisniers? Actually, Kisniers is giving her lessons. Or I was gonna come and visit. So here she is. I want to point out, she has this thing in her hands now. That wasn't there when she was waiting on the old man a couple scenes ago. Weird, huh? And that writing is gibberish. But anyway. Okay, this goes like this and this. Correct. Well then, let's move on to the next lesson. So, it's going well. Yep, she's really starting to get the hang of it. Holding the thing. Ah, uh, she's cute, but she's holding the thing. Katarita sees Zavaro here. She's glad he came. But Kissner directs her back to her lessons. Sorry. Man, how harsh. Yeah, anyway. Avaro is kind of sorry himself. He didn't mean to interrupt. He heard that she'd be trying hard here as well, so he came to look in on her. So it looks like it's going good and he didn't need to worry about anything. What's up with that face, Avaro? It's something odd going on. Mm, no, it's nothing. Looks like there's no problems here. In that case, Avaro will be going. To know that he was needlessly worrying, he's a bit happy, but... Oh, and Kisner is teaching her well. But... Okay, wait up. Kisner has something to talk about with Avaro regarding Katharito. So Katharito stays there looking at her lessons and Kisner gets a serious look on her face. Real serious. So, the necklace that Katarito's been wearing, she heard that Avaro was the one who made it. Right, that's the dragon treasure necklace? Since Katarito's body is still weak, she Avaro made it in order to compensate for that. And why do you bring it up? So, a little earlier while Katorito was studying, she too was able to look into dragons a bit and notice something. So, high-level dragons, in order to accumulate knowledge, manipulate their limbs like humans and demi-humans. In other words, they take a humanoid form. Yeah, in that way, they're, they are, the accumulation of their magic power is increased. That's what's said, anyway. And furthermore, the 
colossal forms of the dragons are quite a troublesome to maintain. Furthermore, in that form their personalities are more prone to violence. So there are a lot of good points to staying in human form, uh, humanoid form most of the time. So these upper level dragons, unless they're in some kind of moral danger, will frequently stay in the simpler humanoid form. Alright. Then, even at a young age, you should be able to engage in that transformation, right? Yeah, probably, of all things. But it takes quite a bit of power. So, Katorito, we're interrupting your lessons again, but what do you think about that? She can do it. Well, someone can. In particular, she says her father was able to do it at a younger age than anybody else. Reading between the lines, it's clear what she's saying is, although she can't do it, so, Kisner thought it would be like that. Her hometown. Do you remember that? She came from quite a ways down to the southeast. Anyway, there were the southern dragons that lived in that region. And according to those stories, the dragons could use certain dragon treasures to transform themselves. In other words, once you have enough power and you use the right equipment, you become able to dragonize. Well, putting together what Kisner has researched and what Avaro already knew, that's what it looks like. In other words, Katarito, using that necklace, should be able to transform into a full dragon. But then why hasn't can't she do it? Perhaps the necklace is insufficient? Or perhaps it's Katarito needs to be stronger. Well, Alvaro was just thinking that to himself, but I think everybody was thinking that to themselves, really. So she looks back at her lessons, although it's clear her heart isn't in it at this point. All right. Alvaro gets it. Thanks, Kisner. And don't push yourself too hard, as usual, Katorito. And this particular topic, let's just not worry about it for the moment. Yeah, let's leave that aside and just study for the moment. She still has a lot to study. Are you okay with that, Katorito? Yeah. Well, she's kind of okay, but she's kind of not. Her affirmation really doesn't have a lot of spirit behind it. So. Alright, we're going to continue the conversation a little bit more once Avaro has left and Kisner follows out of listening range. <laughs> So, continuing the topic anyway, Kisner thinks that the reason Katorito can't become a full dragon 
isn't because she's lacking in power, that there's some other reason. Well, Avaro thinks that as well, actually. It's not that she's lacking power. The two of them think that Katarito is lacking the will to become a dragon. Avaro says that she doesn't have the confidence. And she's got a kind of got the story in her head that she can't do it. Kisner actually felt the same way. But even if she doesn't have the confidence or will, she still wants to do it. And that's why Kisner is teaching her now. Well, Alvaro thinks that she'll certainly be able to transform into a dragon soon. He just somehow thinks it'll happen. <laughs> Funny how Theo was the first one to believe in her. Well, Theo's almost always the first. But she's usually right. Maybe she has some, uh... He's a good judge of character on account of being a god. So, Kisnir nods and goes back to the studies. And we're out of scenes again. Well, I think we've seen enough for one day. So, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Ah. <laughs>